Hi everyone, so today I'm gonna talk about Elga's number, which is also known as the number that lost to Rayo's number. So, not sure if uh, many people have heard of this before, but actually, if you know about the Rayo's number, then you might have probably heard of this number. Of course, a little bit of backstory. The Eggers number is actually um, a, another number that came out from the uh, big number contest from MIT back in 2007. And of course, that is the, uh, of course, it's a contest between two professors. The first one is Adam Elga, and the second one is, of course, the famous Agustin Rayo. And of course, Rayo wins the contest with Rayo's number and the second place number also known as uh, Elga's number is the second biggest number or of course you can say the second place entry well because there's only two of them so the biggest number that Elga has came up with in that contest so what is it and how big it is so in this video we're gonna talk about it so of course again a little bit backstory um, the contests start from what I have found so far. Basically, they only uh, uh, mention four numbers. So first of all, I mean actually five numbers. So first, uh, Rayo went first. So the first entry he put on the board is a lot of ones. He said probably between 30 and 40 ones. So it's, of course, is a pretty big number, a number with like 30 or 40 digits. And then is Elga's turn and Elga, he put, uh, I mean, he actually bring up an eraser and he, ra he erased all the ones except the first two ones. So he get a number, which is this one, 11, with a lot of exclamation points behind it. Of course, this is 11 Victorio, Victorio, blah, 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 with a lot of Victorios in it. And of course, this is a much, much, much bigger number than Rayo's first number. Uh, because just 11 Victorio is already a very big number. And 11 Victorio, Victorio is already a number way, way, way bigger than this number. A number way bigger than the uh, number of atoms or particles in the universe. And of course, one of the rules is that your next number uh, has to be bigger than the last number by a big deal. You cannot just be, let's say, this number plus one or times three, something like that. It has to be much, much bigger than the last entry. And of course, no infinities is allowed. And of course, the last rule is that you cannot mention somebody's number plus one. And then it's Rayo's turn, of course. And just the third turn, he already bring up the busy beaver function, the famous busy beaver. So uh, hopefully most of you have heard of it or know what it is already. If not, I have I actually have a video about that. You can check that out or you can, of course, Google it yourself. So the third entry is that Rayo bring up the busy beaver. Of course, he's, he, he used a Google as his end. So busy beaver a google that's his third entry and of course you know that the busy beaver is a very very uh, fast growing function and therefore this number is again way 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 bigger than this number in fact it's even much bigger than graham's number or probably three three and then of course the next is uh, elga's turn again so Elga, he actually, he couldn't came up with another function or whatever. Well, because back then, busy beaver is already one of the most powerful uh, function you can use. So um, from now on, uh, both of them is just keep building up more and more powerful busy beaver. Of course, uh, there's not just one version of busy beaver. So this is the number he came up with, which is also known as Elga's number, is Busy Beaver um, Theta a Google. So what does this mean? And of course, the last number, the winning number, the fifth turn is Rayo's number, but this is not what this video is about. So what is Busy Beaver uh, Theta a Google? So basically, um, again, first let's look at the basic Busy Beaver, uh, which is basically in Rayo's own 
word. So basically, this uh, explanation is mostly from uh, Rayo's own words on his paper. So basically, busy behavior function is basically the productivity of one of the most powerful or productive Turing machine with n states or less. So n here it stands for the number of states. Of course, you probably know what that is if you're a computer scientist. And of course, um, the more powerful the busy beaver, uh, I mean, there are more powerful busy beavers out there, not just one kind. Uh, so what what's the case? I mean, imagine equipping a Turing machine with a halting oracle. So, which is a primitive, so an oracle is a primitive operation that allows it to instantaneously determine whether an, uh, an ordinary Turing machine would hold on an empty input. And you can call this new kind of machine a super Turing machine. So now we kind of invent a new type of Turing machine called a super Turing machine, which is way more powerful or way more productive than the standard Turing machine, which is used for the basic busy beaver function. And that means for that, uh, that for any ordinary Turing machine with sufficiently many states, uh, there's always a super Turing machine that has fewer states, but is much more productive. And um, the busy beaver is not, so the basic busy beaver is not Turing computable. Of course, we know that uh, it's a non-computable function by the basic Turing machine. However, uh, based on this uh, information, we it can be uh, the basic busy beaver can actually be computed using a super Turing machine. So there's always a more product uh super train machine that can actually compute the basic busy beaver so it's a a level higher than the standard train machine and um in this case the new kind of uh there's a new kind of busy beaver function that uh which is defined with this uh, super train machine and we write it this way busy beaver sub one and so this is how we represent the BCB function with the super Turing machine. And of course, this BCB for 1n can be used to express numbers way bigger than the standard BBN. And of course, no super Turing machine will be able to compute this thing over here, just like the uh, standard Turing machine cannot compute the basic BC, BC function. Uh, busy beaver function however it could be computed by a super duper Turing machine so this is like the third level this is the second level and the super duper Turing machine is the third level so this super duper Turing machine is actually a Turing machine equipped with a halting oracle for the super Turing machines so uh, we can write this or we can represent this busy beaver function with the super duper Turing machine as BB sub 2 n and of course as you can see and you can guess already um, there are more and more powerful oracles and as such you can create uh, the new uh, busy beaver function with these more powerful oracles such as you can write them as busy beaver 3 and BB 4N, etc., all the way to the uh, you can start using ordinals or the uh, omega busy beaver omega N and even omega plus one N, so kind of similar to the uh, the symbols you see in the fast growing hierarchy. Of course, you can keep continue. You have the busy beaver omega plus omega N, and then you can continue busy beaver. Omega times Omega N etc etc, and it is worth to note that even if your ordinal, let's say alpha, let's say if alpha, even if it's an infinite ordinal, so for example BB alpha at Google, and this number here is still a finite number. So remember. As long as this input number is not infinity, so any positive integer that you put in here, uh, even though if this ordinal here is an infinite ordinal, the output 
will still be a will still be a finite number, and this is very important because remember the third rule we mentioned before, um, you your uh your number that you make in the contest cannot be infinity. It has to be a finite number. So therefore, this is allowed because the output for this thing is still a finite number. And in conclusion, I mean at the end. The most powerful BCP for that both Augustine Rayo and Adam Alga consider, so both of them consider the biggest BCP for function is this thing over here, which is uh, the entry for Alga, Alga's number, this thing over here. So they decided this is actually the most powerful BCP for that they consider. And this theta over here is actually the first non recursive ordinal which is actually a relatively small infinite ordinal and they decided we cannot go beyond that with the bcb for function so they decide anyway you know you have to end it somewhere so they decided bcb for B, uh, theta n this is the biggest most powerful bcb for and of course uh elga choose and to be Google, and therefore this is his entry, and also this is the biggest number, or the biggest entry for Elga's in this contest, and this is actually Elga's number, and of course, after that it is Rayo's turn, and Rayo's actually came up with the winning number, uh, which is way, even way, way, way more bigger than uh, Elga's number, which is of course known as Rayo's number. So this is uh, basically Elga's number, which uses the BCB for function, but a more, a lot more powerful uh, version. So thanks for watching and have a nice day.